Let's face it, creating backspin with your wedges is so much fun. Have you ever wondered how tall professionals are able to spin the ball backwards on the green? Well, now we're going to give you steps on how to get there. Spin back. Oh, there oh, it is. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm joined by Danny Farrell, also a Master Club Fitter. And we're going to be talking about backspin today. Okay. Isn't it fun to hit a wedge shot where you see that ball rip back? I, I've never been able to do it before. Well, we're going to get you there. Okay. A lot of that comes down a little bit to attack angle. We know your attack angle is pretty shallow, yeah. but spin. It's fun. If you've got a pin, pin on the front right of the green or front part of the green and you're playing on firm greens, yep. you're going to want to be able to find a way to get that ball to stop. Right. right. And I find my game in, in general, it's, I need spin across the board. So it's easier to, it's going to be easier to practice versus the wedges first and use those tips to work my way up through the bag. Right. And we're going to hit some wedge shots today. Well, you're going to hit some wedge shots today. Okay. Would you look at that spin? Look at that path. And we're going to be taking a look at what your normal swing is look, looks like. Okay. And then we'll try and make some adjustments to try and get you to generate a little bit more spin sure. and we'll see what happens to your stopping power on the greens. Love it. Let's do it. Okay, so Danny, we just got you to hit three swings there, your stock wedge swing. You said kind of around about like 8,000, 9,000 spins, what you're normally seeing with your, with your wedge. We're at 84, 21. Yep. Uh, we'll notice here, you carried a total distance here. The ball actually released out about a yard and a half. Yep. So you ball did not spin backwards, essentially. No. No. Uh, so what I'll be looking at today, and we'll probably play around with a little bit, will be club path. Sure. It'll be face angle and that face to path relationship. Attack angle will also influence that a lot there too. So, yeah. And that should generate more or less spin depending on if you're hitting down the ball with your attack angle or if you're hitting mm -hmm. up on the ball. Right. So that's a 50 degree wedge. At negative 1.1, that's a pretty shallow attack angle. Yeah. Yep. So let's split this up a little bit. Let's, okay. let's play around with a couple of different options to see what we can change. So first off, let's try attack angle. Okay. So we'll work on trying to increase that attack angle by a few degrees and okay. we'll just see if there's any difference. I like it. Negative three, a little bit lower. Oh, I want to see a little more than that. <laughs> Okay, so we hit three shots there by trying to increase our attack, attack angle. Let's see what we did. So you went from negative 1.1 to negative 3.7. Mm -hmm. However, what we find interesting here is the spin rate stayed about the same. Yeah. Uh, your club speed was about the same here. Um, you actually yeah, you generated maybe a little more, more ball speed overall, but the spin rate was still a little bit on the, on the lower side. Okay. Um, Let's take a look at your, your club path and your, and your face angle. What's interesting here is your club path started getting a little bit more in to out, mm -hmm. and your face to path number being a little bit more to the left. So another factor that's going to incre increase or decrease spin is the curve on the golf ball. Yeah. So the next step we're going to be looking at here is going to be your club path and your face angle, angle relationship. We okay. notice this club path here, positive six means you're swinging in to out. So my goal here is to try and get a negative number in front of that club path. Okay. That's step two. So we, okay. we understand the concept of increasing attack angle, how to do that. Yep. You got a couple degrees. Sure. Now I want to play around with club path. Okay. So let's see if we can get your path to be more across. And what I'm going to do here is actually I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, an alignment aid. Okay. So for your takeaway, so I'm, this, this alignment stick, I want you to feel like you take the club back on this direction. Okay. So it's almost like feeling like you're coming back this way, and then on the downswing, I want you to swing down that, down that line there as well. So take the club back here, so feel like you're coming this direction here. Okay. And it's almost going to feel like you're chopping wood. <laughs> yeah. You're going to go this way, and then cut across, okay. and then... Got it. Would you look at that spin? Look at that path. That felt so different. <laughs> so different. Well, you can see you still wanted to push it out there to the right a little bit, so you didn't quite trust swinging too no. far to the left. Right. Okay. Did we make any increases here in spin? 
So with a more across path, you picked up about 800 RPMs of spin. Okay. Now the bowl was, it wasn't quite spinning back, but it's a lot closer to where it was before. Yeah. Um, you would, would kind of, let's take a look at these numbers and see if you notice anything different to your path. It actually was to the left, so negative 0 0.9. Uh, we'll notice your face angle stayed a little bit open, so your face to path was actually to the right. Okay. So what's going to happen here, and we didn't even focus on attack angle on that, but you notice your attack angle was actually down a little bit more. It was kind of yeah. like you were swinging when you were a steeper attack angle, but without even thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, but we'll take a look at the landing angle and, okay. and height there. It's, it's interesting, it's flying about the same, but your stopping power was a lot faster because it had more spin. Okay. Let's take a look um, at dynamic loft too. So with the uh, more cross path, your face being a little more open to your, to your path, dynamic loft is going to be a little bit, little bit higher. Yep. And loft is your friend if you want to spin the bull more. So True. if we're going to get you to 10,000 RPMs of spin, we need to exaggerate this a little bit more. Okay. So I know it felt a little bit more uncomfortable. Yeah. We need to exaggerate this a little bit more. Plus the added thing we might want to add in here is just a little bit more club speed. More speed's going to equal more potential spin. Right. The, more, more, the faster you swing at it, the more chances that ball is going to spin faster. Okay. So, so that's kind of the, the benchmark for you. You want to try to get up to 10? I, I would love to try and see if we can get you to 10. I think we okay. get you to 10. I think that carry to total distance is going to be the same, or you might even see that ball stop, come back a, a yard, or okay. like half a yard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a hazel. Both started, oh, we're so close to 10,000. But look, the bull spun back. 99.1 going 98.5. Your path was, was pretty good. You just held onto that face just a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. That was good. And I know you weren't too comfortable. You, you mentioned you were worried about the hosel shot there a little bit. Big time. You could Big give time. yourself a little bit more room. That has to have some spin on the bull. There we go. Very nice. Yep, that thing spun back one yard. Okay, so we take a look at these numbers now. Let's see what happened. So we tried to exaggerate that feeling with your path. Yep. We went negative 6.9. So you basically changed your path by about 10 degrees. Sure feels like it. Right. <laughs> but look at what happened to your spin. So first off, your spin really didn't change when you tried to change the attack angle. Then we started seeing that spin rate start to increase a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more speed with the, with the club speed there but definitely a lot more spin on the bowl because the bowl is now cutting across it as opposed to having that hook spin on it. Yep. So you said it definitely felt like it. How uncomfortable does this feel? Super uncomfortable. Super uncomfortable? Yeah. Okay. Like if, if this was a serious route for me to go, it would take a basically a full probably year of commitment for me to kind of make that change. Right. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you like to, well, you, you're comfortable with your path being a little bit more in to out and not yeah. spinning the ball, and you get fit for the right, right loft. You essentially irons that are going to yep. spin a little bit more overall, essentially. For, golf shaft, yeah. golf ball as well is another, yep. another piece to it as well. Um, this is just another way, if you're on the golf course and if you need to, well, one, curve the ball to the right yeah. or generate more spin, yeah, this, is, this is an example. option. So yeah. it's, it's just showing that attack angle Hitting down on the bowl is going to get you to generate more spin. Getting that path more across left to right is going to generate more spin. And I think yep. a lot of our viewers will be looking at this and that is kind of, kind of similar to what they're seeing is they usually see a lot more spin than what you're seeing. Right, and yep. you know, the opposite is true as well. You know, we had kind of me working with my feet going left, everything working on left and coming across to it to try and add more spin. But the flip side of that's true for other players as well. If they want to take a spin off it and get a few more yards, aim to the feet to the right, more ball position up, you know, and trying to get that club path and face and get more closed to make the ball go more left. Right. Player too. Yeah. And that's more of a rehearsal that a lot of golfers need to make if they do slice the ball. If their path True. is really far across, yep. it's the feeling that you've got, got, got to feel. But yeah. let's face it, you hit a big, a big fade, you want to get that out of the bag if you can. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so we'll notice here, we got you to spin the ball backwards. We can see here, we started off with uh, the ball releasing out about 1.5 yards. Yep. Now we'll notice here, your carry to total distance actually you know, had, some, had some spin on it. One thing we noticed here, even though you had more club speed, is notice you lost some distance. And Big that's time. that distance that you were talking about, is if yeah. the ball spins more, 
it's going to go less. Yeah, I, I'd have to completely rethink my my gapping, right? And the the irons I play, I'd have to tune those stronger, you know, to help offset the wedges too. If we wanted to make this change, right? So I'm uh, I'm I'm looking at the smash factor number. I'm kind of geeking out a little bit, looking <laughs> at where we, we kind of were starting here. And then as we started getting more and more across, look at having what happened to that smash factor. And that might be a little yeah. secret to why myself, why you get those higher efficiency numbers yeah. with, with, when we see a lot of a club testing. Yep, yeah. 100%, yeah. yeah. So gophers, if you want to learn how to generate more spin, this is one of the methods. You've got a method of being able to open your body up a little bit, cut across the ball a little bit, leaving that face angle a little open the ball will spin a lot more. Attack angle also is another way. By increasing your attack angle, by moving that ball position a little back in your stance, naturally the ball is going to spin a little bit more as well. So if you don't take much of a divot, try taking a little bit more of a divot with a little bit more speed. It's definitely another great option. Finally, golf ball. Golf ball really matters. So it depends on the golf ball that you're playing, but if you're playing a golf ball that doesn't spin too much, Try playing a golf ball that's designed for higher spin, and you might be surprised how much more stopping power you're going to get on the greens. And finally, let us know what's worked really well for you on the golf course. Send us a comment. Let us know what's worked well, why it's worked well, and also while you're at it, make sure you click that subscription button.